All right, folks, in today's video, we are gonna be painting the ceiling. As you can see here, we have just finished our drywall taping, mudding, sanding, and we have also done a nice skim coat on the top, actually a little bit more than that because I had popcorn ceilings, so we scraped it. We did two coats and a skim coat on top for a third, sanded that down, and now we are ready. So right now, I'm very happy with the way the ceiling has turned out after I have sanded it. It's nice and smooth. I'm not gonna do any texture on it. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna be painting it. Okay, so first and foremost, as you can see, there's a lot of clutter right here. This particular job painting a ceiling, we have to work quickly because we wanna keep a wet edge. I'll explain what a wet edge is in just a little bit. But first and foremost, if you are in in a construction area like this. Let's get rid of the shop vac. Let's get rid of these benches. Let's get rid of this drywall stuff because what we're doing is we want to again move quickly down our room. This is drywall, bare drywall, and this is mud, complete mud on my ceiling. I need a primer and sealer. If you are repainting, then you wanna go ahead and use a regular primer. And then our ceiling paint, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, it's a Benjamin Moore ceiling paint that is dynamite for jobs like this. So again, because it's bare mud drywall, we need the drywall to soak up the primer and seal it. For this particular job, we are not gonna be getting on a ladder. We are gonna be using a long paint pole a paint roller, this one is 9 16 3 8 is also gonna be sufficient. And since I have it on hand, I'm gonna use it, two inch brush, cutting our corners. So we have our roller pole, paint brush, paintbrush roller. We have our primer and sealer. We have our roller here. Now I prefer the job would go quicker if you can get yourself an 11 inch. This is a nine inch to each their own. This is a small room, so I'm not really concerned. And then I have a paint tray, just a regular paint tray. And we are gonna be putting some foil in this because I wanna use this multiple times. And that's a hack. You lay foil in there, matting it down nice and sharp so you can still use these little grooves here for your roller. So you can go ahead and just throw it away after you're done with a clean pan. All right, and for our paint, after we prime and seal it, prime and seal it, we're gonna do one coat. Painting, we're gonna do two coats, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply those two coats. This right here is not budget friendly, but it's the best, it's the cream of the crop. This is Benjamin Moore Waterborne Sealing Paint Ultra Flat 50809. It is the white. They also make 508, like 1X, 2X, 3X, 4X, but it says base right here. You don't want base, you want white. That's if you're going white, you can use the base if you're gonna go an actual painted color for your ceiling, but I want my ceiling white, so I'm going with white paint. And what that base means is they're gonna tint it to a certain color of whatever you want on the Benjamin Moore palette to paint your ceiling a color. Now with that in mind, they're gonna shake this at the store and you wanna use it within a couple days. You don't wanna just sitting around. The same day is the best. I actually let this sit around for about two days, so I need to reshake it because the longer you let it sit around, the additives are gonna separate. This has no acrylic additives to it, which makes it ultra flat, which makes this type of paint hide imperfections in your ceiling, which you want. Bad paint job on the ceiling, imperfections can be picked up in a moment's notice when people walk in. That's why we're going with the cream of the crop. Ladies and gentlemen, we're cutting in real quick to thank today's sponsor, which is Manscaped. If you guys have not already seen their new lineup of products, I highly and definitely recommend checking out their full lineup. Of course, they are most well known for their Manscaped Lawnmower Body Groomer, and they also have a great performance package, which includes boxers, and all sorts of wonderful items. I'm actually wearing a pair of their boxers right now and I love them. I have about probably maybe nine to 11 sets of their boxers. They also have come out with two-in-one shampoo, chapstick, a straight razor, which is really cool, matte black, it's super sick, body wash, you name it. Now their Lawnmower 4.0 is their newest one with an LED light. It is washable, waterproof. You can use this in the shower. You can rinse it after you're done. I use this on my chest, my underarms, down below, trim up my legs. I use it everywhere. It is a great trimmer, small, compact as well, with a nice long battery life. And if you guys want 20% off plus free shipping 
on whatever you order. If you just get the straight razor, 20% off free shipping. If you just get the performance package, some boxers, whatever it might be, my direct link is the top link in the description box as the comments as well. That direct link will take you to Manscaped's website where it's gonna automatically apply that 20% off with free shipping for you. Add whatever you want to your shopping cart, check out, get your discount, get your newest awesome products by Manscaped. You won't regret it. And so once again, thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now obviously we are in the future, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel. We're doing an LED light wood slat wall. Not fully, it has a little twist to it, so make sure you're subscribed for that. So check that out. And now let's get back to the ceiling video. Now the ceiling is already completed, but we still need to show you how to do it, which it turned out great by the way. Now there are other brands like the Glidden Ultra 7700 or the Benjamin Moore, the Regal Select Flat as well, but they came out with this one that in my opinion tops them all. And I'll also link this paint in the description box below. So first and foremost, we need to clean all this up, leaving just our paint supplies. If you have furniture and you can't move it, Move the furniture to the center of the room the best as you possibly can, because as we roll, we're gonna roll all the way to the corners, but not all the way, so we mash up paint. Over on this wall here, we wanna leave a little bit of a gap, because after we roll it with the primer, we're gonna take our brush, and we're gonna cut all the corners and finish it up. Again, this is primer, we wanna seal it. Doesn't have to be perfect, our paint job needs to be perfect. So for the primer, it doesn't really matter which direction you roll, but for the paint, we're gonna roll it in two specific directions for my window, my room, and my light. And I'll talk about that when we get to the painting part. But for right now, we're gonna shake this bucket up, we're gonna put it in the pan, and we're gonna roll this way. Again, doesn't really matter with your primer. Leaving an edge where my two inch brush, and then we're gonna cut all the corners, like I said. And because I just finished sanding today, I'm gonna go ahead and look over to make sure there's no heavy dusting left over from sanding before I do my primer. So go ahead and examine your ceiling one more time if it's bare mud drywall and dust off any heavy dusting that is accumulated on the ceiling if there is, so we can prepare for primer. All right, I got my foil in my pan there. And if you are wondering, this again is the nine inch premium microfiber, nine sixteenths nap. That's for nice smooth finishes. Easiest way to shake a paint can, and a five gallon paint can. If you need to reshake it, take the handle and do this for a little while. All right, make a long story short, the Sherman Williams was old and it wasn't usable. So this is the Kilts drywall interior primer and sealer that I will be using. I will link this in the description box below. I went with a two gallon jug. If there's any leftover, this is a fairly large master bedroom. If there's any leftover, I have the rest of the house I'll be doing as well. If you can refrain from it, the larger jugs, they might dry out on you. They are cheaper, but if you're gonna use it quickly, you just wanna keep chunks and dryness out of the buckets, that's why. We don't want any of that getting on our ceiling. All right, we've got our paint in our pan here. We're gonna go ahead and set that a little bit more over this direction here so we can get our pole to it. All right, you'll notice I have my pot lights hanging down. It just makes it a lot easier. These are really simple ones to drop down. Sorry for the echo, we're gonna talk a little bit louder so you can hear me. So we're gonna go ahead and get our roller. Nice and good to go here. Let's go ahead and rotate it quite a few times here. All right, again, I'm gonna talk loud here. This is where you wanna work quickly and you wanna keep that wet edge. That wet edge is very, very important for your painting coats but we want to go ahead and keep a wet edge for our priming coats as well. So, I've already started it over here. I want to stay about two inches away from the sides, and I'm going to be about an inch to two inches. You can get a little closer if you want, but I'm going edge to edge without touching this wall over here on this edge. I'm gonna cut into the video as the voiceover real quickly. Now you're gonna see me use short little strokes, 
But that's just kind of my method for the ceiling, and then I branch into longer strokes. Some professional painters like really long strokes, but I noticed that when I did that on the ceiling, I started veering off my line that I wanted to stay on and the wet edge passing into two inches. Make sure you watch the full video and get all the tips that I mentioned in the video. So again, I just started with kind of some short little strokes, and then as I progressed, I lengthened my strokes. And so we're gonna go ahead and Roll it out, getting close, but not too close because we're not going to want to smear the primer over on this wall right here. If you have a long pull like this, it's going to be less strain on your arms. If you roll, try to roll and keep your arms low. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but try your best or you're going to get a lot of strain, especially the way I'm doing it on my left arm here. So we're creating a wet edge along the left side as I'm facing this side, and notice how my metal curvature of my roller is over towards this direction, left side, so I can get that right side roller up nice and close. Again, we're not going all the way to the wall because we are gonna be cutting afterwards and cutting again means we're going to be using our brush to go ahead and finish. So again, if you can, keep your arms a little bit lower. And I'm cutting it in about eh, a good inch and a half or so. Again, not going all the way up against it. That corner there, see that corner? I'm going right up to it. And it's okay, you don't have to get it a perfect like two inches. But more rolling, the better. Instead of our brush, we're trying to eliminate brush strokes. After you go back and forth down the whole entire row, you wanna finish the row, whatever direction you choose, you wanna finish it off in that same direction. After we went back and forth and we rolled, now we're gonna finish it in one swooping direction. So again, we're gonna finish off the row going that way. That looks really good right there. Okay, so we have our wet edge towards you guys here. If I'm facing this way, the wet edge is over here. We want to keep that wet and we want to keep moving across the room. Again, with primer, it doesn't really matter the direction I'm going. It's up to you if you want to do it the way of the sunlight with your finish coat, and I'll be talking about that but we're gonna be doing two coats of our Benjamin Moore. So let's continue, we're gonna keep this edge wet. That edge is very important for, again, the painting, priming. This is in preparation for our coats of Benjamin Moore. So this is great practice for you guys. So work quick, move through the room. So same method applies with my roller. Again, it's facing this way. My curvature is facing that way. Now this is the important step here for our rows as we continue this way, is we wanna overlap on our wet edge only a couple inches max. We don't wanna go deep into it. That's just gonna waste paint and waste time. But we wanna overlap that wet edge by at least a couple inches. So we're gonna go right up here into our corner, overlapping about two inches or so on the wet edge once again and we're gonna go ahead and roll down the way here. So if you get any spots where the roller seems to hang up and just kind of slide and gushes a lot of paint up there, you wanna just go ahead and roll back over that spot if it kind of clunked up on you. And the reason for that is obviously we don't want clunks. We want a nice smooth roll. That's why we're using a roller. So again, I'm just going back over it one more time now, Chris, what happens when you get to pot lights, okay? So pot lights are gonna be a real nice, easy go around here. So again, we're overlapping our wet edge, getting it right over there. And then A, you can dismantle them, but I kinda need some light to see what I'm doing in here. These ones actually can unplug, but we're simply gonna go around. And for this purpose, I'm gonna flip around my brush and if you do it this way, you might get a little bit on the cord. And then I'm gonna switch it around and continue on. Same method applies going around the other side there. This one's a little bit easier because the light is dangling on the left side of the pot light. But same method applies, it's gonna get a little tough. 
And because my inlets are completely flat, I'm just literally running it right over. But if you have insulation or anything dangling like this, obviously you can't do that. Again, still keeping my wet edge about two inches over. Going to go back over. Coming down the same line, making sure I got all my spots. Any heavy paint marks, any heavy flow, I'm going to go ahead and work that out a little bit more smoother. And then coming down my line in the same motion, there we go. That looks great. And I'm being super smooth about it. I'm not like gouging it into the roof, like, ah, but I'm giving it a nice little, just, just a smooth little brush. You guys are gonna fill it, definitely filling it. And I'm not putting too much paint on here, but I should be using my eye protection, especially if I'm gonna be standing right underneath it, because you will, you might get some uh, paint whips that come off of it. If you notice your paint getting a little bit thinner and you're having to gouge it in there more to roll it, that means it's time to get more paint on the roller. Then go back and get it on up there. Now with this roller brush, again, if you're not getting a smooth roll right off the bat, and what does that mean, Chris? That means when you put it up to the ceiling and you start to roll, you just get that, that excess clumping. You get that um, where it doesn't look as smooth as when you're about halfway through your roll. Then just go over it once again. Here I am working around the edge of my pot light. Need a little bit more paint, finish it up. All right, here's another great tip for you here, especially after you've just rolled your brush in your paint and refilled. I do not like to start. Don't start all the way in the corner because it's gonna mash up all over there. So what I like to do is I like to pull back a good, maybe even four feet, three to four feet on your wet edge, two inches in and then it's gonna be mashed up if there's excess right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roll it down this way so it thins it out to a perfect consistency to get up there to my corner. Now with that said, earlier in the video I did say leave about maybe one to two inches. I'm actually getting a good roll and I'm about a half inch to an inch, some spots maybe an inch and a half, maximum two inches but if I'm getting it close without touching this wall, I can do about a half inch, maybe just a hair more. And that's gonna be less cutting for you as well with your brush. And that's better if you're worried about brush strokes as well. So I'm almost halfway through. Actually, I think I'm a little bit over halfway through. Keeping my wet edge, moving quickly. Now your next question is, Chris, what if I have a huge room? Well. If it's larger than this, I would actually take it in sections so you're not like rolling all day. This again is like a 12 by 14 or something like that. And where I left off again, I'm just coming right back to it. And so then go in different sections, go kind of maybe in smaller sections, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then work that section if you're worried that your wet edge is going to become dry on you. And obviously, watch for where you step behind you. If your paint bucket is right there, that's gonna cause a lot of issues that you don't want in the middle of a quick paint job that you're trying to do in a nice, quick manner. And again, finish this off right here, going down the line, just beautiful. Absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. Also, if you see something don't go back over it. Like, don't go back to it and start rolling again. We are gonna be using 220 sandpaper for a quick sand after this primer coat. And then we get into the fun section of, bum bum bum, prime check. Chris, what's prime check? Prime check, we can't do a prime check. We could. I'm gonna wait till the light's better tomorrow. Plus, it's already about 9.15 at night. Lo and behold, most of us, paint after work hours. If we're not full-time, well, I am a full-time YouTuber, so there's no excuses, but I just felt like painting at nighttime because I was editing another video. 
Actually, I was editing the video of how to mud and tape your drywall, if you haven't seen that already. So, you can go around with a shop light, and that's just your typical Harbor Freight shop light with a 100 watt bulb. Looking for any imperfections. Or you can wait till it is nice and light outside, different times of day before you proceed forward with your expensive Benjamin Moore paint. And if needs be, we're gonna go ahead and fix any issues for our prime check. All right, with the ceiling now completely finished and the closet, now we need to go ahead and cut around our edges. This is when a nice little small like cork container or something small where you can dip your brush in it plays a key factor as well. Now for cutting, what we wanna do is we wanna take our brush and we wanna go ahead and get the paint in the center of the brush. So we wanna load up in the center, dipping in our brush. Nice, getting it in the center there. And another tip for you, if the foil is not working for you, and it starts to kinda of undo if you have junky foil, use saran wrap instead. All right, I wanna get the excess off because obviously I don't wanna be cutting with too much in the middle, but enough to get a nice line going down. Again, we're gonna be going down this wall and priming this as well, but I don't want too much goop up here in the corner as well, because we're gonna be cutting that and we're gonna be priming the walls as well. But this is a ceiling video, so try not to get too much gooped up down here. And we went ahead and just cut in that corner. Again, the tighter you can get with your roll, that's gonna prevent stroke marks. If you do it right, it's gonna be so subtle. And if you are wondering, I have my benches set up because I am too short to reach this. So it's gonna take you a couple passes, but try to get that cut down around the inch mark or less would be very ideal. It's just gonna take you less work on cutting as well. And not to mention, if you're a perfectionist, you're not gonna see any stroke marks in the corner. We are gonna be sanding in between coats, so that should get rid of any brush marks that are heavier than we like to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are done cutting and the ceiling is actually drying very quickly. Give it enough time to dry thoroughly before you do get out your 220 sandpaper and we're gonna give it a very light pass over. That's just getting any chunks or whatever might have been up there. You never know. We're gonna run a couple passes. I'll show you that. Something to keep in mind, as you're working down the row, with your wet edge and it's drying, you're gonna see all your wet edges because you've doubled up the wet edge. I have now literally finished cutting the closet as that's drying, cutting in the closet. I look back over here and it's almost completely disappeared, the lines that you'll see as it dries. So don't worry about that, that's not permanent. That's gonna dry on you, but just a little heads up. And after rolling the complete ceiling and cutting, I still have a little bit left over. I'm gonna pour back in my barrel. The two gallon jug, I only used about 25% doing this 12 by 14 master bedroom with closet as well. But again, I have a lot more bare drywall I need to do, so that's why I bought it. You're gonna save a few bucks, but if you're just doing one room, a bathroom or something like that, just pick up the one gallon. They sell those, two gallon or a five gallon if you got a big job to do. Alrighty, it's the next day now, and the ceiling is looking absolutely fantastic with one coat of primer, and again, my cut lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and see. I can't really even see any brush marks at all in the cut lines, so I'm definitely happy with that. Now, before we proceed, now we are gonna be sanding very lightly with 220. Actually, this is 240, which is even finer. 220, 240 will work. This is too big of a beefy model. This is actually a motorized one. I'm not gonna use the motor. I'm just gonna use it by hand. And what I'm trying to do in this situation is lightly go over the entire ceiling with 220. A pole with a orbital 360 non-motorized would be the easiest, and the reason I say that is because this is a little bit heavy. Again, I'm not gonna use the motor, just 
hand strength. Now we're going into the future, but I purchased a Gator 9 inch 360 sander for my next sanding, but we'll go ahead and proceed with the video. But this is what you should get. This is the nine inch. Again, your 220 lays right on top of the mat right here. Presses in, screws into your pole right here, and you're able to control it all over the place, being able to sand really good. Again, this is nine inch. I'll have this linked in the description box below. Definitely works a lot better, easier on the arms than the big heavy machine you're gonna see me use. Yes, it worked, but when I'm doing all these walls for my next paint job, it's a lot easier. What we're doing in this situation is we're gonna go over everything, and if there's any little boogers of anything that have gotten up there, this is gonna put a nice clean round preparing us for our paint. Again, we're gonna start in our corners here. Again, we're gonna start in our corners here. And what we're just doing in this situation, it was we're just giving it a little bit of a brush. We're not scraping it. We're just gonna go over it. And what we're trying to do is clean off any debris that might have got up there. Again, this sander is not the most ideal because it is a little bit bulky and heavy, but I don't have a big room to do, so I should be able to do this in five minutes tops. All right, I definitely had some boogers up there. As you can see with very light sanding with this, this was all the junk I was able to pick off of it. Now something to keep in mind as well, go back over and look now over your ceiling and see if you can see any clumps of dust that the sander when you were pivoting around left up there and then just brush it off with your hand. Now we're gonna move on to prime check. Now again, what prime check is, is prime check is utilizing this time of light in the late afternoon, early morning, getting up nice and close and seeing if there is any infirmities in your ceiling. And if there is, you would address that with very light amount. And I'm talking about things that you just can't live with. Like we're up very, very close. These are minuscule. I'm not gonna do that. But let's say you wanted it perfect you would light, I'm talking about a, just a very thin amount of mud over that, let it dry, and then use Kilt's spray primer and prime over that. But again, it's looking for anything that you cannot live with before you proceed to painting. Because what you don't wanna do, you don't wanna be lying in bed, that's where my headboard's gonna be. You don't wanna look up at the ceiling and say, oh my goodness gracious, how did I not see that? You want to address it during prime check. This is the Kilts spray primer right here. This is the low odor one. You can also get the red original if you want to. This one I've used in plenty of my mudding projects. Works great. I'll link this below as well in the description box of the video. So I'm gonna walk around the room, double check everything. If everything looks good, we're gonna move on to painting. Everything looks good, now let's move on to the fun part, painting. Okay, so as you can see here, here is my entry to my master bedroom coming in this way. And as you can see, I only have one window. It's a very, very big window. Uh, I have no closet windows over here. So the light comes in left to right as I walk into my bedroom. What we wanna do is we wanna create, if there are any lines, which I'm not expecting any, but we prepare for the worst case scenario, also imperfections as well. So as I walk in, I don't want people to see lines going this way, as in from me to that master bedroom wall there. What I want to do is use the sun and go left to right for my final second paint coat. That's gonna hide any imperfections in the ceiling. So right now is my first coat of ceiling paint, Benjamin Moore, and I'm gonna be going this direction from my bedroom door to the headboard. 
For my second coat, I'm gonna be going from the window, just like we did for primer, and then we're gonna go that way to finish it up. We're gonna go opposite directions. So start with the one you don't wanna finish with, and we're gonna do that right now, and then we are gonna be doing the cut just like we did with the primer. So if you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom now, feed the dog, feed the kids, because for the next however long it takes, we need to work smooth and quick. I'm gonna go ahead and move these benches out of the way so I don't trip over them. If it's been a few days, stir, shake your paint up again. And then this step might not be necessary, but since I already have a brand spanking new one, I'm gonna go ahead and use my second brand spanking new one for the paint job. And that might be a little over the top excessive, but if you have that few extra bucks, definitely do that in my opinion. Because besides my kitchen and living room, this master bedroom, I'm gonna be staring at this ceiling a lot every morning and before bed. So because I have it, might as well start fresh, clean and nice. Same with the plies, nothing has changed with our strokes here. Again, I'm starting a little bit away, just like our primer, so I don't glomp it up in the corners. Get as close as you can without touching once again. And then we're going to cut afterwards, like I said. And painting during the daytime, in my opinion, with that light coming in, is just a lot better. I can see better than pot lights. Because these pot lights right here, I mean, if you have to do it at nighttime, you have to do it, but they were kind of blinding me as I'm trying to like work around it. But the daylight here, this is, uh, this is real nice. Remember, you want to get enough paint on your roller, but you don't want too much where it's just dripping all over the place, all over your walls. And again, right where I put it, that's too much right there. So of course, we're going to use that and we're going to roll it backwards and forwards, getting rid of those major spots there. Now once again, I am going this direction, and then I will finish up this direction towards you guys over here. And same method applies for after you're done rolling. Go that last stroke, same direction, all the way down. And this is when it's really good to have a clean room because I'm not having to look down and hit walls. Now again, this is our wet edge. Same thing, we want to work quickly and we want to overlap a couple inches max. Same exact thing. Let's get this first coat done. It's the same thing method applies for primer. If you see this right here, those are your wet lines drawing. I actually, with the sunset, not sunset quite yet, but as it's going down over the mountain, I'm looking this way and I'm seeing all my lines as they dry. Remember, same thing in the primer, those will go away, but you will probably see some lines. That's your wet edge drying because you've doubled up on every single one of those edges. Now I haven't done the closet quite yet. The closet isn't very big, but I blew about at least 75% of a one gallon for a 12 by 14, whatever size this room is, 14 by 14, 12 by 14. 
So we need two coats. I need to go back to the store, grab another one. It's a little bit expensive, I know, but I'm gonna be able to do this full room with some spare paint for my bathroom for hundred bucks plus tax. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm pumped on it. So while I go to the store, I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back, same thing. We're gonna sand it very lightly with 220. I can see a few little boogers that I don't know where they came from, but they're sticking down and that sandpaper will clean that right off. And when I talk about boogers, I'm talking about just maybe something that was inside my microfiber brush I didn't see. Maybe some dust that I didn't see and I didn't wipe off that accumulated in a little clump. That sandpaper is gonna skim that right off. So give it plenty of time to dry before we sand and proceed to coat number two. Coat number one, fully dried in person. It looks amazing. <laughs> that is some good paint. Definitely worth every penny. I'll tell you what, I'm not seeing one roller line. Everything is completely dried. Unfortunately, I haven't got to the store yet, so we'll sand and do second coat tomorrow. Let me cut in here for one moment. Now, as you see me sanding this, I'm not going all the way, I'm not going all the way up against that edge. I'm getting close, but I'm not bumping into the wall and just doing nice, smooth, light strokes across the ceiling to get any boogers off. Okay, now we are gonna be doing the second coat of ceiling paint. We have beautiful light. Before we do get started painting, we're gonna go ahead and sand the ceiling once again. Let me go ahead and show you a couple boogers that I did find on the ceiling after coat number one. Remember, we're trying not to sand too much because we don't wanna go through that paint, but let's go ahead and look at this. Somehow, a little hijacker has gotten up there. See that? And it's not that big, but it's a big booger and it leaves a little bit of a trace right there. So we'll go over that. Here's another one here for some oddball reason. I might have to get a little sandpaper. Uh, there we go. Okay, was able to get that nice and flat. And then what the sandpaper is going to do, it's just going to go over like, see, here's another one for some oddball reason. Stuff gets on your ceiling, wherever it comes from, I don't know. But using that sandpaper, it's gonna go over that, it's gonna flatten that out. But what I would recommend is, especially if you could see it from the ground level, then you wanna get up on a ladder and you wanna get those chunks off with your fingernail. But when you're down here, you can't really see any of them. So I'm gonna go around looking for some other little boogers and then we'll go ahead and sand over the ceiling surface. All right, once again, I got my nine inch gator right here on my pole. I've gotten all the boogers off looked at it closely before I'm going to be doing this. Because what this is going to do, this is just going to literally get it prepared where you're not going to like go over it crazy. We're going to start in the corners obviously. And you don't want to jam it up against the side walls. But we want to go ahead and just score the surface preparing it for the next coat number two. And I find it kind of easier sometimes if it's kind of getting stuck on you. Where you start down here and then you pull it towards you, especially if you can't get that forward momentum going, it's a lot easier to pull it behind you. All right, folks, now it's time to cut before we lay on our second and final coat for the ceiling. So I got my brush, I got my paint. We're gonna go in all four corners, including the closet. We are gonna cut first. And by the way, after the first cutting, I can't see any brush strokes where I did cut. 
And the second cut allows the perfect coverage so you don't have that dark line around. So don't skip cutting, definitely cut. So let's go ahead and cut all the way around first, and then we're gonna get our old roller out, and then we are gonna be rolling our final coat with the window here going this direction for our final coat. All right, everything is prepared. We're gonna go coat two. And once again, like I keep talking about, because the window is here, coat two is now gonna go this way. We're gonna start in the same corner I did as my primer, and we're gonna work that way. As you probably have noticed, I actually unhooked my pot lights and have removed those just for a little bit more easier of convenience, being able to go right over the hole I got my paint and roller once again. Now, as you probably noticed, the window is black, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel about how to learn how to do that, as well with all the remodel on this channel. So, dog's fed, I've gone to the bathroom, I've been fed, we're gonna hit this, and we're not gonna take any phone calls, we're gonna bump some music, and we're gonna enjoy a beautiful last second coat. So here's a little tip for you guys as well. I've noticed a few little boogers. Again, you have no idea where they come from. Paint can, maybe some dust, maybe a little bit of microfiber off the roll. I have my little stand here. As I'm working, I'm looking at the ceiling very carefully because this is the final coat. If you see a little booger, you get up there and just slightly wipe it off with your finger and then go one direction again to finish it off so you don't have this little smear mark it's nice and rolled back out again. So I'm paying attention as I'm working my way down. Actually, here's one right here. You obviously want to catch it in the same row because you don't want to go back. So once again, there it is. Obviously there's paint right there on the end of my finger. Now I'm gonna roll that direction once again over that patch. Also be careful of build up around your pot light holes here. Make sure that's not built up. And if your wet edge has build up, go back over the wet edge, cross over it a little bit more if you have to to get rid of that build up if there's too much build up on your wet edge. And also I'm getting a lot better coverage with one go around. So again, one dip, I'm getting my full line on my first coat because after the sealer, the paint is literally still sucking up. After the first coat, the second coat is going on a lot better, meaning I'm using less paint, only one go through on the paint tray, and I'm able to get a full row. Sure, this direction is about two feet shorter than this direction, but the first go around, I was double dipping for one row. Now I'm single running it, very nice. Alrighty folks, we're all done. Now it's time to let it dry. Sun's going down. Lights coming in, I did my closet. We're looking absolutely fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and fully let it dry. We'll be back with you tomorrow to show you the dry full end result. I still need to paint these walls here. So make sure you're subscribed for that video as well. The technique is a little bit different. You're actually gonna back roll it a little bit. Let's grab a cup of coffee and look at the end result. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is all finished. It's about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. We're getting some nice shadows coming in in the morning time and evening time, even better. And it's probably been five days, I think, since it was completed. 
and stunning. I don't see brush marks. I don't see wet lines. I don't see anything. Everything is dried beautifully and it is stunning. Now something to remember is I have a fan insert that I'm gonna go ahead and put up. Now what that means is maybe in the future I'll have a fan here, I'm not exactly sure, but I have a cap that I need to put up there. Now I need to paint this cap the same color as the ceiling so it blends in a little bit better than having this. Over the course of the years, the sunlight coming in, this will probably yellow, so I wanna paint that with Benjamin Moore ceiling paint, same paint that I use on the ceiling. And I'll screw that in, and then in the future, we'll see how this summer, this, this is my first winter in Colorado, transferring into spring and then summertime. Of course, I've visited many, many times. My whole family lives here, but this is gonna be my first summer, so I'm not sure if just the windows and a fan on the ground will be okay, tower fan. So I might put in a ceiling fan, I'm not exactly sure quite yet. Anyway, love the results. I will have the Benjamin Moore paint linked in the description box below. Guys, if you wouldn't mind, thumbs that video up. It helps the channel and the YouTube algorithm. I am so impressed with this paint. Expensive, yes, I used about a gallon and a quarter, gallon and a third, maybe like 35% of the second gallon. Two coats, looks tremendous. If you like videos like this, then please subscribe. Also, check out the video. I painted the window black on beige vinyl. Beautiful results. I have also finished the entire room with interior paint, which you paint it a little bit differently than the ceiling. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel for that. Look for your links again below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Don't let the party stop, guys. Hit one of these videos, continue to watch, and we'll see you soon.